some meatloaf. So why don't we get to it? Once again, we're gathered here today and we're going to make us a great old-fashioned dish. An American meatloaf, everybody. When's the last time you had some great meatloaf? I can't wait. But before we get started, I'd like everyone to know that today's episode is partially sponsored by South Florida Jazz List. Check them out on all social media at South Florida Jazz List as well as their website, SouthFloridaJazzList.com. Now let's get to that meatloaf. Once again on Quarantine Cuisine today, we're gonna to make an old fashioned meatloaf. I got myself three pounds of meat here. It's about two pounds of ground beef, 80-20, and I got some ground turkey, one pound. Together, it equals three pounds. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce the rest of our ingredients today in this meatloaf. We have ourselves four slices of white American sandwich bread diced up. And we're gonna be using one of my best friends in the kitchen nowadays, the air fryer. I'm gonna show you just how to do that in a second. So four slices of American bread diced up. We have half a cup of egg whites in lieu of milk. Quarantine cuisine is all about making it up as we go along, and egg whites is what's gonna substitute for some milk. We got two whole eggs. We got half a cup of mozzarella cheese. That's gonna be part of our wet. And now for the sauce, we got some tomato sauce, eight ounces. We have half a cup of barbecue sauce. We have two tablespoons of brown sugar. We have one teaspoon of Italian seasoning. We have one teaspoon of cumin ground. We have one tablespoon of soy sauce. We have some onions for garnish, as well as one cup of onions diced, four garlic cloves, of which one I'm gonna show you because it's very interesting how to get those garlic cloves just right, and a tablespoon of butter, salt and pepper, let's get to it. So this air fryer, man, it has really been an amazing purchase. I love it. Cuts out about 70% of the calories in most food. And with breadcrumbs, which is what we're about to make here from the sliced up Wonder Bread, it's amazing. Pour in your bread. Shake it up, make sure it doesn't clump up on you. Then you press our power, and we hit 370, go. And now we just wait about five minutes. So I wanted to show you guys exactly how I take care of this garlic here. Uh, a note about garlic, depends on how you treat the garlic, it's gonna give you a different reaction in the pot. So we're gonna crush this one, and basically what you do is you take your garlic clove, Lay your knife on top and smash it down. Take off the outer shell. Make sure you get all of it off there. And then, there's usually the end of a root right here, which you cut off as well, like so. And then you continue to smash it up. Make sure you get all the little stuff out that is not part of the inner part of the garlic. all in there all nice and crushed up. Now before we get started, we're going to turn on our oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And then our pot here has been on a medium high heat. We're going to add our butter, 
Swirl that in there, let it all melt down. Once your butter has cooked down completely, you add our onions in there. Get all those onions in there. This is about one medium onion all cut up. Gives you about a cup. Using a rubber spatula to get it going. Once your onions have become translucent, after about three to four minutes of cooking, then we're gonna add our garlic. We're gonna stir that in there. It already smells amazing. Let that cook down for another three to four minutes. That peeping tells us that our breadcrumbs are ready. Look at that, perfect. All right, once we've cooked those down, I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper to it. Pink salt always. Fresh ground black pepper here in the Jazz Kitchen. We use the very finest nutritional ingredients to try to enhance your eating experience, baby. Oh yeah. And we're done. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna start with our wet ingredients. Cracking our eggs. We're gonna add our egg whites. We're gonna whisk all that up together till foamy. The last thing we will add is the cheese. Make sure you whisk that up. After it's all whisked up and all foamy, now we add our cheese to it and incorporate it well into this wet mixture. This is about a minute to two minutes of whisking. You can use a hand mixer if you'd like, and if you would not like to use eggs, you can use just egg whites, but this will be our liquid binder along with the cheese. Now the cheese has some Italian seasoning as well. We're gonna add this to our meatloaf next. Our meat for our meatloaf here has been marinated overnight with lemon juice, salt, and pepper. We're going to add our liquid on top of here, and we're going to start to incorporate all this together. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we add our breadcrumbs, and we have this potato smash. We're going to use to smash the breadcrumbs. You want to make sure that you smash them all into getting a great thick texture out of it all. Once you smash up all those breadcrumbs, then we're going to incorporate it all together into one big mass. I want to just get everybody in here for a minute and see how we've incorporated this breadcrumbs into the actual mixture that we're making. And it's feeling really nice and sticky. This is a perfect texture for making a good meatloaf. You don't want it too wet and you don't want it too dry because otherwise that meat's not going to hold together. But I think we got the perfect amount of binder. We got the perfect amount of meat. We got some great onions in there. We're gonna add those next. We got our onions here, we're gonna add on lastly. Just gonna go ahead and make sure all these onions are nicely incorporated into our meatloaf. We had them cool off for a minute after being cooked. Perfect. All righty, look at that, perfectly incorporated. Now we're gonna go ahead and add some Italian seasoning. We're gonna add some salt. It's about a teaspoon of salt. It's three pounds of meat here. And then we're gonna add some fresh ground pepper. We're gonna get our pan. Now this is my own little theory. I like the air to circulate all over the meatloaf, so I use this grated pan on which I put it inside of a bigger pan so that the air can circulate better underneath the meat, thus cooking the meat more evenly. This is gonna go inside of our oven that's already at 350 degrees. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use our rubber spatula and our big spoon here, and we're gonna go ahead and pour that meatloaf right on top of there like so. This is going to be dinner for a week. Oh yeah. Now, we're going to use our rubber spat and we're going to mold it. 
molded into our meatloaf there. Molded. We want to make sure that it's even this way. So when we cut into it, it's not going to fall apart. This way. has to have that killer crack sauce. I'm talking about sauce so good, it makes the meatloaf. We're gonna add in our tomato. We have our pan preheated here at a medium high temperature. Get all that in there now. This is quarantine cuisine, jazz kitchen, use every little bit. Next, we're gonna add our barbecue. We're gonna let both of those Heat up to a boil before we start adding our spices. Oh yeah, now be careful. As soon as you see those bubbles, you're gonna start spiking. We gotta work fast. Here's our soy sauce. Add that in there. Sort it around. Now we're gonna add our cumin. We're gonna add our brown sugar. We're gonna lift the pan to take it directly off of the heat. That helps simmer it down just so it won't be spiking on you. You don't wanna get that splashed on you, it's really hot. Mmm, 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 mmm. All right, so now what you wanna do is you wanna lower the temperature down to a medium low. You wanna put a top on this so it doesn't splash everywhere. And you just wanna let it sit there for about five minutes and then turn it off until our meat is ready to be basted. And so our meatloaf has been in there for about 35 minutes. We took it out and we're putting on this sauce, making sure to cover all the little holes. Oh yeah, this is gonna be very nice. It's halfway done. I'm gonna get all that sauce on there. Make sure you cover every single little nook and cranny. And now we're gonna put on some of these onions as garnish on top. Just organize them nice and pretty all along the top of your sauce. Just a few sprigs. When you're done, this should all be like one huge layer of sauce covering this delicious meatloaf. And these will give it some amazing flavor on top as they get cooked well done. We're gonna put it back in the oven for 350 degrees for another 30 minutes. And then we're going to put it on broil for 10 minutes. And we're going to just singe the top right here. It's going to be delicious. So we got our meatloaf in perfect condition. I'll take you through the steps of how we got to this in a minute. All right, so here's our meatloaf. First thing you wanna do when you take it out of there is you wanna take the temperature and you should be able to read at least 160 degrees Fahrenheit internal temperature. And we see that it is. Take that out and let it sit for about 10 minutes. So the process in total was 30 minutes, then we basted the sauce and the garnish and then we put it back in there for 50 minutes. We gave it 10 minutes of broil on low, five minutes of broil on high to get to this perfect meatloaf. Yes! Can't wait. Oh yeah, man, look at that. Oh man, this is perfect. Just the right texture. Everything just blended together perfect. Here at Quarantine Cuisine, we try to cook with what we got. And we made a perfect meatloaf of the ingredients you saw before you. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. That's just perfect. Thank you again for joining me. My name is Damian J. I'm your sack chef. Today, episode three, the perfect meatloaf. Oh my God, this is just, oh man, this is just.